Armando Torres still part two encounters with the non wall. This one's called movement of the assemblage point and survival of the assemblage point. On another occasion, talking to a small group of friends, Carlos explained that another effect of the movement of the assemblage point is that things acquire new forms. The clarity of appearances gives way to a deeper and more essential clarity, and live beings adopt the form of enormous round fields of light. He said that the luminous configuration of a man or a woman is a portrait of their existence. Seers look at each detail and in the way that they determine whether a person is prepared for apprenticeship or not. Most people mistreat their tonal in consequence. Their fibers fall like the plants of an old curtain. Those tired fibers work as a kind of glue, blocking the natural course of energy. Don Juan called them tonal bells because they are shaped like that. They are dark and give the impression of a heavy weight. When moving, those fields slither or give brief jumps as if they are dragging something or as if the person has put on a bear suit too big for him. In warriors, on the other hand, the pleats have tension. Their cocoons are almost spherical and they overflow with vigor. A lower part is compact like a solid rubber ball and it bounces, lifting off the ground. When they advance, these globes don't slither sorely but rather jump with joy and sometimes drift over a long distance. Don Juan called them precisely that, the planers, and said that it was a pleasure to bump into one of those on the street. But only seers are able to redesign their luminosity in such a way that they can take completely off from the earth and fly. Some are able to break their limits, which is perceived as those as if those warriors have ruptured the skin which imprisons their energy, exposing a radiant central core. They are traveling sorcerers, and they don't depend on their physical body to be aware and to act anymore. The task of an apprentice is to recenter his energy body through acts of impeccability and force that lead to move the movement of the assemblage point. Above all, he should achieve mobility for his energy making it flow in a natural way. In that way, his fibers stretch out and begin to shine with an amber shade. Perception takes place in a point of intense white light that is generally rigidly fixed inside a very specific area, which sorcerers call the human band. That point aligns emanations we receive from the outside with those which are found inside our luminous field, similar to the way an antenna picks up a radio waves and transforms them into sound. To our surprise, he assured us that to see that point is a relatively simple matter, which happens already in the early stages of the path. It is enough to suggest in the appropriate way. An apprentice should never say, I'm useless. I don't see anything. But he should say the opposite. I might see it. Yes, there it is. If we repeat that intent over and over, sooner or later the assemblage point will will enter our own perceptive field, and that is the first step toward moving it deliberately. One in the group asked him how we could witness our own perception. He explained that, since we have no way of perceiving anything if it does not pass through the assemblage point, the only way of understanding this matter is to say that the point perceives itself. Whatever we see is the result of its operation. Because of that, we have the sensation of a flame burning where our emanations join with those from the outside. He said that we might equally well describe the phenomenon in auditory terms or as an electric crack that signals alignment. The important thing is to verify it for yourselves because that will put you beyond the mind and it will fill you with silent knowledge. The mere act of seeing it has an impact which moves the fixation of the assemblage point. He continued by saying that an experienced sorcerer is able to displace his attention very far from the human band. This enlarges the reach of his perception considerably. Some go on a trip to the realm of the inorganic beings. That alignment is very gratifying for his energy, and the traveler returns home renewed. Others have an inclination to go to the lower area, the area of the beast, the most sordid corners of awareness. For human beings, that is a dangerous place because to remain there for a long period can produce physical lesions. They ask him where the self stays when the assemblage point moves to the low area. He answered, 
It seems you are thinking of the assemblage point as it fits inside your inventory of reasonable things, but that is not so. Don't see it as a solid object or as another part of your body. We don't have an assemblage point. We are it. While a warrior is imprisoned within the limits of the human form, the furthest place he can transfer his assemblage point is to the area of interpretive vacuum, which new seers call limbo. That is the real space on the frontier of the other world, a transition area on the periphery of the other attention. These movements accumulate and serve to condense our personal power until they finally crystallize in a kind of luminous matrix that Don Juan called the dreaming positions. Through exploration of those positions, the individual experience of a sorcerer leaves the human groove and becomes practically limitless. The movement of the assemblage point is not just propelled by, its, by an interest in accessing astonishing visions, but it is above all directed by the fact that each controlled displacement liberates enormous quantities of energy. Ideally, the warrior applies his unbending intent and lights up his energy field as if he becomes one gigantic assemblage point to witness everything once and for all. In that case, the point shoots out and up and the traveler becomes a blast of light and he never recovers his form again. This is the greatest challenge, the union of our awareness with infinity.